I want to start this morning by going back to the year 470, um, way back when, kind of the flotsam and jetsam of the left behind after the destruction of the Roman Empire. And, and around that year, near the city of Vienne, France, the people had suffered a just terrible series of natural disasters. And uh, the archbishop at the time, Archbishop Mamertus, um, he did what any self-respecting archbishop named Mamertus would do, and he called a fast. And then he ordered that the people, they go march around the fields, and they say special prayers and litanies for God's protection and for blessings upon the crops that they had just planted. And so as the first little shoots, seedlings of these crops burst forth from the ground, the, the early Christian, our early Christian ancestors, you know, walked around the fields and they prayed to the Lord for protection from things that were far, far bigger than they were, like floods and droughts and disease, and then for fruitfulness that depended on blessings, like rain and sun that were likewise just out of their hands. There was nothing they could do. All they could do was ask. Ask God, protect us and bless us, the Lord. These days began to be observed annually uh, in the late spring. Uh, they took their name from the gospel that was appointed for the sixth Sunday of Easter at the time, um, which was not the gospel we just read, uh, but was from the John 16, the next chapter, where Jesus says, ask the Father anything in my name, and it will be given to you. And the Latin verb for ask is rogare, and so they became known as the rogation days. Uh, and the Sunday before the rogation days, which are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, became known as rogation Sunday. Many churches, including ours, don't observe this every year or annually, uh, but we're observing it today, um, setting aside this day in the liturgy, as you'll see as we go forward in the liturgy in, in various points, in various ways. Um, asking God for fruitfulness, for protection. Um, there's still, of course, much we cannot control about our lives. Um, it, we remember, though, he's got the whole world in his hand. It, it, we have gotten better in the last 1,600 years at controlling things, you know? Uh, our sense of contingency on the natural world, particularly for those of us who live in like urban or suburban environments, uh, is much lower than if you were like a peasant in whoever was controlling Vienne, France in the 470, you know? Um, we have irrigation, we have flood control, we have pesticides, we have fertilizers, we have refrigeration. Like, we can go to the grocery store and we don't even think about what the climate was that produced all the stuff in there, you know? But there is actually still much we cannot control. Uh, the devastating scenes of the tornadoes in southern Oklahoma last week reminded us of that. We still need God's protection and blessings. When the rain hit your house at like 10.30 last night, how many of you wondered if it was hail? You know, like, there's not much we can do about it. In fact, we need to, to do this thing on Rogation Sunday, this thing where we ask God or we turn to God even more so in a way than our ancestors did, precisely because we are so far from the agricultural world we depend on. We're so good at taking care of things as a society. We especially need to remind ourselves that everything we enjoy is ultimately a blessing from the Lord. This was brought home to me last week when due to the vagary of our family schedule, Drew, who is our eight-year-old, Drew and I ended up at dinner um, alone, just the two of us, at a Mexican restaurant. And over Mexican food, and by Mexican food, of course, I mean chicken strips and french fries that he ordered at a Mexican food restaurant. <laughs> over Mexican food, uh, we had a long conversation about how all of our food comes, ultimately, from plants, and plants get their energy from the sun. And this was shocking. He refused to believe this fact. There was a lot to convince him about. Like, what about beans? Like, beans look like rocks. I'm like, yes, they do look like rocks, but they are not rocks, actually. They are plants, believe it or not. And he's like, all right, well, what about animals that eat other animals? I'm like, that's a good point. But do you know what those other animals eat? Plants. 
Finally, by the time we paid the check, I had him convinced. Everything comes from the sun. And you know, there's not much we can do to affect the sun one way or another. However much we learn to do and control as human beings, we remain dependent on a created world that is just full of gifts and blessings that are far, far bigger than we are. And so we ask God. We ask God for abundance, for protection from calamity. Like, yes to rain showers and no to tornadoes, please. The Rogation days became a major thing in the English church. Um, of course, we descend from the English church as Episcopalians. So there, in the English church, it became the custom for the clergy and the choir and the acolytes to go walk the boundaries of the parish. And I don't mean like the boundaries of the parish. It's not like we're going to march you outside and make you walk the berm. The parish in England was like, like it is in Louisiana. Right? It was like a civil unit as well as a, as a church unit. They go walk the boundaries of the whole region. Everyone lived in a parish, whether or not they went to church. And you walk the boundaries of the whole thing. And they would take the sticks, like I talked about with the kids, and they would go beat the boundaries of the parish as they walked. Now, my children's sermon, like, sure, I tried to appeal to their childish sense of, you know, bathroom humor about the dog. But it really was like the church marking the territory for God. The idea, though, was that it was not the church's territory, but God's territory. All of it. Everything that went on in there. The blacksmith shop, right? The marketplace. Yes, the church. The home. The doctor's house. Like, all the things got beaten with the stick. Everything that happens in the world is subject to God's protection and God's blessings. Not just everything in here, not just everything in here and in your home, but everything out there is the gift of God. Now, would it help us if we were to like go, say, beat on the Collin County Appraisal District's office with a stick? <laughs> no? No, no. <laughs> Probably not, but it will make you feel better. Like, <laughs> it is helpful, I think, still to remember that the land we own and pay taxes on is God's blessing. The parks, right, where we go watch our kids. Like, yes, the umpire is terrible, <laughs> but our kids are healthy and they're playing and the weather is comfortable. Like, the hospital. God is at work there. God does great things there. Like, it could hit, get it, take a hit. Just don't hit anybody in some of the emergency room while you're, you know, doing it. Your home, your garden, your lawn, the, the bank, your office, the parking lot, all of this is God's, even the donut shop down there. That donut shop cannot make us donuts for coffee hour here in 45 minutes unless the sun shines on the wheat and the rain falls on the sugar cane. If we can spare the rods, we probably should at this point, not enough damage. <laughs> but don't spare the prayer. You know, Lord, help us. Bless us, protect us. And the natural world is not the only world, not the only set of forces that are just far, far bigger enough than us that we need God's protection and blessing in. Our social world is also far, far bigger than we are. And this may sound counterintuitive at first, because the social world is people, right? We are people. How can that be beyond us? But like, think about it for a moment, individually at least. The historical and cultural terrain on which we live is as much in our control as where the high places and the creek beds are in our city. So we ask God. We ask God for protection from violence, from hatred, from addiction, from illness, from war. And also, we ask for God's blessings. Rogation Day isn't just about God's protection from the calamities, but also God's blessings upon our fruitfulness. Which is where we get to Jesus in the Gospel, who commands us. He says, I have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So in this world in which we've been planted, what do we need to bear fruit? It's like Rogation Sunday, it started asking God for fruitfulness for the crops. And we know that to bear fruit, crops need protection and they need blessings that we cannot provide. Soil, sun, and rain. 
They need the gifts of God. So what is the soil and the sun and the rain that we need to bear fruit in the world? The thing Jesus is talking about. And the seemingly obvious answer, particularly the way our readings from 1 John and John put it, is love. I am giving you this commandment that you love one another, Jesus says. But our loves, such as we have them on our own, our desires, our feelings, our affections, they are not enough on their own. C.S. Lewis, in his book, The Four Loves, which we've been looking at this Easter tide, he writes this about our sort of natural loves. He says, when God planted the gardens of our nature and caused flowering, fruiting loves to grow there, he set our will to, Lewis's dress, but he set our will to prune them. And unless his grace comes down like rain and sunshine, we shall work that garden to little purpose, especially now that we are fallen and the soil has gone sour and the worst weeds seem to thrive the best. What Lewis is saying is that to use our loves in the world, to produce fruit, God's fruit, fruit that will last, we need God's grace in our lives. We need to ask God for God's grace in our lives. Our colleague to ask God to pour his love into our hearts so that the power of his righteousness and goodness will work on us. Just the way the plants need the sun and the rain, we need God's grace and love. We are no more capable of producing God's fruit ourselves than we are of changing the weather by ourselves. We depend on God. To say that righteousness is beyond us is to say that sunshine is beyond us. It's a gift of God, something we can ask for, something that can shine into our lives, something that can produce great fruit in abundance. But it's not something that is naturally ours. Goodness and grace and love are not naturally ours. I'm, I'm trying to say, I guess, in a nice, pretty pastoral way, like what Paul says, it's a line he takes from the Psalms, actually. He says, no one is righteous. No, not one. And for what it's worth, that is the sort of protest I want to make. I, think, I wish college students would camp out on that point. Like, no one is righteous. No, not one. Let's make some signs that say that. That would make more sense honestly, of the situation over there than a lot of other things that are being said. No one is righteous. Not one. We depend on God. To be clear, I'm not saying this is just true to explain the world conflict in Israel and Gaza. This is true here in our cities, in our church, in our families, in our hearts. That none of us are righteous on our own. That we depend on God for goodness and love is the deep truth about human beings that Christians know. This is like our anthropological starting point. Trying to hold on to our own goodness, to imagine that we are in some sense like worthy of God's love and capable of pairing good fruit on our own, that, that is the thing that keeps us from being happy, actually. Once we let go of the falsehood that like our freedom and our righteousness and our power and worth are ours, then we can actually receive true freedom, true righteousness, true power, true worth. From God, then we can actually have them, which is so much better. In its original form, the Rogation days were about newly sprouted crops that would grow and yield abundantly. And they were about putting ourselves in right relationship to God on that point. Like, God, we need you for this. And Rogation Sunday then gets expanded into our lives, into our social world. But it's still about the same thing. We need to be in right relationship with God, that God, we need your help with this. We need your grace, your blessing, your love in our lives. Your protection from things that are far, far bigger than us, yes, but also your grace deep in our hearts. And if we do that, we ask for God's blessings and protection, not just on our crops, but on our, our hearts, then our lives will be as fruitful as our fields. The people of God will be as well-fed in soul as they will be in stomach. Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus says in this passage. That is, that is like very easy to quote, but it is like a really high bar, you know? And today is a day to say 
at least here in church, in the prayers, like, God, we depend on your gifts to do that all the time. Every breath we take, every bite we eat, every drop we drink, but also every hand we hold, every hug we give, every dollar we share, every, every love we show. We need God's help to make it so. Lord, protect us and bless us.